Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkBook 14SG2. This is a two-in-one laptop, so you can use it like a laptop or fold it into a tablet. There's a pen inside, as you'll see in a few minutes as well. You can also run it in display mode here like this, or even have it work in tent mode. It's pretty flexible to uh, be able to contort this thing any which way you want. And what we're going to be doing in this review is taking a closer look at this laptop and seeing what it's all about. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this starts at around $840 or so and goes up from there. As configured, this one is about $1,000. Now inside our review loaner here, we have an i7-1255U processor from Intel. This unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM. The base model has eight gigabytes. And of note here is that there is a RAM expansion slot on the motherboard, but just one. So they have eight gigabytes soldered onto the board. And then you can put another eight in the slot that's available. And this one has that RAM installed already. And my advice for the best performance is to either get your unit configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM or plan to buy a module and install it yourself as soon as you get it. And the reason is, is that when the computer has that RAM slot occupied, it operates in dual channel memory mode, which gets it the best graphics performance. If you don't have that second slot filled, you will see some issues with its graphics performance, especially if you're doing things like video editing or gaming or something along those lines. So all the tests that you're going to see me run on this machine is on a 16 gigabyte unit with both of those slots filled. So if you were to buy this and see performance that doesn't quite add up, having that extra memory on board is going to make all the difference. The maximum RAM on this is 16 gigabytes, however. It has a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD installed, and you can upgrade that, and there's a second NVMe slot on board, so you can have two internal solid state drives if you want to go that route but again this one just has the 512 gigabyte drive installed now this one has a 14 inch display on board it is a 1080p display though which means it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio we're starting to see most pc manufacturers now release computers with taller 16 by 10 displays including lenovo but this one is still at the 16 by 9 aspect ratio it runs at 60 hertz. It is an IPS touch display, of course, because you have the tablet functionality. And of course, it works with the pen, which we'll look at in a minute. It's not very bright, as you can see. This one operates at a maximum of 300 nits. So this is not the nicest display I've seen on Lenovo laptops. I will say, though, that it does look a bit brighter in person than it does under my studio lights here. But it's definitely not as bright as some of the other displays we've looked at recently, and of course it's not as tall. But if you watch a lot of media, uh, you might prefer a 16x9 over a 16x10. It's got a nice webcam on board. This will shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second, so it'll work well for conference calls and that sort of thing. And you can see what the quality of the camera is looking like here. And like many Lenovo laptops, this one has a manual shutter that you can set here at the top to block the camera lens. So you don't need to put some tape on your laptop there if you don't want to. It weighs about 3.31 pounds or 1.5 kilograms. Now the build quality on this feels pretty good. It's a mixture of metal and plastic. The display lid and the bottom are aluminum and the plastic makes up the keyboard deck. I did find it's pretty well balanced here. As you can see, the keyboard doesn't come up too much with me when I lift the display lid up here. So it does have a good amount of balance to it. The hinge works pretty well and largely keeps the display in place. And of course, you can flip it around into all sorts of different modes here. But it does feel pretty much the middle of the road, if you will, uh, of this ThinkBook line. Nothing spectacular, but it is solid enough. As far as ports are concerned, you do get a bunch of them on this device. So on the left-hand side here, we've got uh, two USB Type-C ports. One of these is a Thunderbolt port but the other one is just a regular USB Type-C. So I would have liked to have seen two Thunderbolt ports here, but your Thunderbolt is going to be the lower port. Both of these ports, though, are full service, and both will charge the laptop. By full service, I mean you can get display out, power in, and USB devices connected. Below that, you've got an HDMI output for connecting an external display, so you can add another display here. 
You have a full-size USB-A port here along with a headphone jack. On the other side, we have our garaged pen, which will come out this way, and we'll take a look at this in a minute. The pen will charge inside of its garage here, so you don't need to have a battery installed on it. You have your power switch here, which doubles as a fingerprint reader, a micro SD card slot here, which will keep the cards flush to the computer's case if you wanted to augment the storage of it. And then you've got another full-size USB-A port here, along with a Kensington lock slot for locking it down on your desk. And as far as the keyboard is concerned, this is standard Lenovo Fair, which is a good thing. The keys are well-spaced and nice and large. It uh, doesn't take much time to get used to typing on it. And it has decent key travel because the case is thicker, so you get a good amount of tactile feedback as you're typing. And of course, the keyboard is backlit. Here you've got your trackpad, which tracks very well in line with other Lenovo laptops of this class. Now, though this laptop is not much to look at, it does get decent battery life. I'm seeing about 10 to 11 hours on this if you're doing the basics like word processing, email, and that sort of thing. If you're doing some games or video editing, that of course is going to eat into the battery a bit more. But for the basics, I think this will easily get you through a work day or a long flight. Now let's take a look and see how it performs. We'll begin with the basics and work our way up from there. So let's begin with some web browsing. We'll load up the Google Chrome browser here and visit the nasa.gov homepage. Now remember, this has an i7 processor on board, so I expect it to perform quite well at this kind of thing, which it does. And as you can see here, as I'm browsing around the web, everything is coming in very quickly, and there's really no lag or delay here at all, which I would expect out of a processor of this class. So if you're doing the basics here again, this is going to be more than adequate for that. A little bit earlier, we checked out YouTube and we ran a 1080p video at 60 frames per second. We had a couple of drop frames when it first started. That's usually something we see. But after that, it was able to run quite smoothly with no interruptions there. So all was good on that front. Now, as far as Wi-Fi is concerned, it does support Wi-Fi 6, but not Wi-Fi 6E. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 242, and this puts it right in line with other processors of this generation. As for speakers, it's not so great in the audio department. The sound is very tinny out of it. The speakers are on the side here. You do get decent stereo separation. They're very clear for voice, so if you're on a conference call or something, it's going to sound fine. But music, again, sounded a bit tinny and flat on this one. So you'll probably want to use Bluetooth headphones or connect up some headphones to the headphone jack. So let's take a look now at some video editing. We've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up and a 4K 60 frames per second project running in the timeline here. This cat, by the way, is producer Jake's cat. And what I'm going to do is just drop in a cross dissolve here on the timeline and see how that renders in real time. And as you can see, it does it pretty quickly here without any stuttering or drop frames. We'll change that. Uh, transition there and play it back again and see how it does. And again, uh, we're not seeing much of a delay. Now, this is a very basic editing project, but I think this does give you an idea of the kinds of editing you can do on a laptop like this. The performance, though, is what it is because we've got that second stick of RAM installed on it for a grand total of 16 gigabytes. If we didn't have that RAM installed, the performance on video editing and other things that make use of the graphics here would not be as good. So this is an example of where having that RAM decked out is really important. But if you're doing some basic video editing, I think this laptop will do more than fine for that. Now the pen on this feels pretty good. It will detect the pen's presence when it's a couple of centimeters above the display. And once it detects the pen, you can rest your wrist on the screen and it won't pick up your finger movements, only the pen. And one of the things that I've noticed that's an improvement over prior generations is that the pen doesn't feel as slippery here on the screen as it did on prior iterations. There's a little more friction here, which is good because it gives you uh, some better detailed control of everything. Doesn't seem to be much in the way of latency here either, and this will detect pressure as well. You do have two little buttons here on the pen, which might be hard to see. So if you hold down the button here, for example, I can have it erase what I just wrote. I can also use the other button to select in a region of the screen as I'm working. And of course, you can configure this in different ways depending on what you're doing. My only issue with this pen being so thin and small is that I'm often hitting those buttons by accident. So getting the pen placed in your hand the right way is important here, but 
Beyond that, it does feel very nice with a decent amount of friction here when you're writing. So let's move on now to gaming. And if you are planning to play games on this, even casually, I would recommend going with the i7 processor and making sure you've got that RAM decked out at 16 gigabytes. We're gonna start with Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a bit of a demanding game. We were in the 20 frames per second territory or less at 1080p, but what you're looking at here is the game running at 720p, where we were able to get about 30 frames per second pretty consistently on it. So not bad uh, for playing this AAA title casually, if you will. Uh, we also checked out Doom Eternal. This one we were able to run at 1080p, and there at the lowest settings we were getting between 35 and 45 frames per second. We also ran Fortnite, again at 1080p at the low settings, and there we got between 45 and 70 frames per second. And overall, the graphics performance out of this is pretty much in line with what we've seen from other i7 laptops like this one from this generation. So not bad for casual gaming. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,251. And overall, this laptop performs in line with other i7 processors from this generation. No surprises there. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a passing grade of 97.4%. And what that indicates is that when you put the computer under load for a sustained period of time, its performance is going to remain relatively consistent. And that was something we noticed in the games that we were playing earlier. So all in, uh, it's cooling itself off pretty efficiently. And the fan isn't all that loud either. In fact, most of the time you're not gonna hear it. And you will hear it running, of course, when you're editing video or playing some of those games, but it's not all that loud at all. I've definitely heard louder fans on other laptops of its class. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux performance. We found that it was able to boot up the latest version of Ubuntu without issue. Audio was detected properly. The video was properly detected. The touchscreen worked, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth also worked on it. So no problems whatsoever uh, doing all the basics on the Linux side. And one fun project you might want to undertake with this device is having OneDrive boot up Windows and the other one uh, boot up Linux because, again, you do have two NVMe slots inside. So overall, not a bad uh, little two-in-one here from Lenovo. My only knock against it is the display. It's not very bright. It's not the best-looking display that I have used, and I think if it had a better display, I'd be more excited about it. But if you find it at a good price, I think its performance is consistent, the battery life is very good out of it, and it feels pretty well built as well. So uh, altogether a nice middle of the road kind of laptop here from Lenovo in their ThinkBook line. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.